Hello everybody. Today's video, we're going to get this varnished and we're going to get it installed into the rib cage of the ship. We're also going to do some trim, some ladders, and a few other things. So if you want to see that and more, make sure you stay tuned. <music> Hello BSC family and welcome back to my bench. So today we're going to varnish this and uh, you know just a quick little recap. We finished all the planking. We did a rough sand. We put all the nail markings in right and uh, yeah you can always see all that if you haven't seen it yet. Go up to the corner area right up here and uh, you can see that video or you can check out the whole playlist right but anyways uh that took a long time so now in today's video we are going to varnish this and we're going to get it installed into the rib cage of the ship we're going to get some ladders done we're going to get some trim work done probably a few other things but before you uh get all involved in here scroll down just a little bit hit that subscribe button for me make sure you share the video Hit that bell notification so you don't miss out on anything. Give me a follow on my Instagram and my Facebook group. I've been posting pictures so you can see updates before uh, you see the videos. And uh, a big thanks to Okri for sending me this ship so I can make videos for you guys. So if you want, do me a favor, please. Go down in the description. You'll see a link after you're done watching the video. You'll see a link for Okri www.okri.com go check out what they have now if you haven't seen any of the other videos they sent me a cabinet a workshop cabinet that thing is a dream to put together and is such a big help for any model ship builder you definitely would benefit from picking one up for yourself now this here the flying dutchman it's a great kit so far and you know I'm having a blast putting this thing together. Uh, hopefully you're having a good time watching it. Hit that like button, you know, if you are. You know, it helps out these algorithm things. So yeah, go check them out. And uh, we're going to get on to this. So what we're going to be doing is we got the satin varnish. Okay, now I've got the whole paint kit for this ship. Uh, when you go check out uh, the ships, uh, a lot of the ships they have paint kits for you know, they don't just have ships, they have paint, they have LED kits. Go check them out. Trust me, you won't be uh, won't be disappointed. But anyways, so this kit comes with the satin varnish, right? This stuff here. Okay. So, now that everything's sanded and marked up the way it's supposed to be, we need to varnish this, right? And then we're going to start getting into some of the trim. Uh, yeah, scroll down. Yeah, so we're going to varnish this. We're going to get it installed. And I found a small mistake, um, not a big deal, but this is why you should always measure everything, not just go by what they tell you in the paperwork. Okay, so I'll explain that once we get to that point. So varnishing, I mean, it's going to be fairly easy. You're going to want to put something down over top of your counter, your desk, counter, table, wherever you're working, so that uh, nobody gets mad at you, right? Then we're going to get yourself a brush that you can use for this. Now this stuff is all water based so you can just have yourself a little dish of water and clean out your brushes and wipe up any mess before it all dries. And with the varnish you're going to want to varnish in one direction. Okay. As much as possible. So we're going to get this all varnished out. Um, I'm going to get a few things set up and then I'll come back and I'll show you uh, a little bit of it and then I'll finish the rest off screen um, most likely anyways because I don't know how long it's going to take me to actually varnish this uh, drying time on this stuff uh, I know the stain didn't take any time at all you could use a hair dryer or something to heat it up a little bit be careful not too much heat because you could warp these decks right and you don't want to be doing that because then it's a whole another ball of mess that you're going to have to deal with so um air dry is the best but 
you can heat it up a little bit with uh, some airflow and you know a low heat on hair dryer all right so i'm gonna get this stuff uh all set out find my brush get some clean water and we're gonna get this uh varnished up for you so give me a minute i'll be right back okay so i've got my paintbrush got some fresh water I've shaken up the uh satin varnish here got myself a little clear cup we're gonna throw some in here now yes it does come out white but it does dry to a satin finish all right paintbrush is clean and clear so we're just gonna start brushing all of this on now i always found that this stuff was hard to do because it's hard to see where you've put stuff on any clear coat all right so yeah you're just going to follow the grain of the wood basically follow the planks kind of keep track of where you are since uh, you can't really see it and so all you're doing is just straight down and we're just going to keep right on going all the way across all right and then we're going to do all the pieces Now, being that this one here, um, I haven't actually looked in the full instructions yet, but um, if it tells me, you know, one coat, two coats, whatever, I can look here in a few minutes. But uh, even if it's two coats, I think this bottom one, I'm probably only going to put one coat because you're not really going to see half of this. Um... Being that it's going to be covered with all kinds of stuff. Alright. And. Uh, it's going to be hidden. Under the main deck. Alright. I just want to protect it. Uh, give it a little bit of a sheen. And. I plan on weathering this a little bit. So I want something against the wood first. Before I actually. Put any type of weathering on this. Now, if you're going to do the same, uh, you're going to weather yours. I suggest doing doing the same thing. You know, don't weather straight onto the wood unless, you know, you want to. But if you want to protect the way the wood looks or if you happen to screw something up with the varnish on it, you can at least then try to correct your mistake, you know, without wrecking all the work that you've done on the wood. All I'm doing here is just looking and picking up the excess, you know, trying to make sure there's no major lines of uh, varnish sitting there. There we go. Now, a good way is while it's still wet, use the light to your advantage to see if you've got any dry spots or anything. Mine is looking pretty good. So I'm going to set this one aside. I'm going to bring in the next one. Uh, is there a reference number here? Give me a second. I'm going to check just to see if it says one or two coats. Okay. Give me a second. Okay. So I've taken a look and uh, I see nothing as far as two coats. Okay. But there is something here. Where is it? Uh, now don't ask me to. This is called bitumen bitumen judea basically from what i'm reading <clears throat> this here is kind of like a a wash or a filter right and you can use it to age the wood after you've varnished and you can thin it down or straight out of the bottle it says right in the instructions uh so yeah maybe we'll check out a test piece here and see what it does but uh, yeah I'm gonna continue on with this here I'm gonna shut up and do a time lapse for you so please enjoy
Okay, so I'm going to clean out my brush. Uh, we've got all of this varnished. I'm just going to let it all sit uh, to the side. <coughs> Excuse me. And I'm going to let it all sit to the side. Let it all dry. And then, uh, yeah, I'll come back and we'll get on to the next step. So I'll see you guys in a few minutes. Okay, everybody. Well, I've got this thing. I uh, got all of it uh, varnished. It dries. Um, and it actually tried really quick and really nice. Yeah, I know you guys can't really see that, but it's got a slight sheen to it. Uh, looks really, really good. And, uh, yeah, then I'm trying out, well, pretty much committed to now, uh, putting on this I don't even know how you pronounce it. It's Bitumen uh, Judea. Judea? I have no idea. But anyways, yeah. So I'm trying that out. And I'm kind of committed to it. And it actually uh, quite a... Looks pretty good. Especially if you... They say to brush it on. Uh, I did thin it out just a little bit. But instead of just brushing it, I've got a piece of foam here. And I'm dabbing it. So let's just kind of show you how it's looking here. So if you brush it on, I mean, you can leave it on real dark. Uh, I thinned it out a bit. You don't have to thin it out. So I'm just kind of brushing it on randomly. Coating everything. Leaving heavy spots, light spots. All right, then I'm going along with the sponge and just kind of blending it, leaving some of the heavy wet spots so I get darker spots. But pretty much getting rid of brush strokes out of it is what I'm doing. And then I'm just letting it dry. All right, so that's all I'm doing. And I think it actually looks pretty darn good. So you can experiment uh, pretty much any way you want, you know, like, but this is how I've decided how I'm going to do it. And to me, it looks pretty good. I'm trying to get this thing dirty, grungy. I know it'll never look like a movie one, but, you know, I like the ship, and I think it's going to look pretty good. So I'm just leaving, just dabbing it to blend away the, uh, sometimes I dab heavy, sometimes I don't. I'll go back and redo a couple spots. But you can see that I'm leaving little pools so that I get variation in my colors, my shades. Sometimes I dab heavy, sometimes it's light. Just depending on the effect I'm trying to get out of it. So I'm going to put that one aside. And we're going to do up this one. That one's almost dry already. And I did it just before I turned the, the, uh, the camera on. Now you saw I did that whole thing. We're going to see how long it actually takes. And you can see, like it doesn't look too bad just brushing it on. But it is leaving those little brush marks where you start and stop. And I'm trying to avoid that. And that's why I'm using the uh, the sponge. Now up where I'm not going to see it as much. Um, I'm not using as much up there. Um, just for the simple fact that, you know, you, you're just not going to see it up there. Right? It'd be too far inside the ship. No access holes or anything to see it down that far. But you still want to do it just in case you can see some of it, right? Now 
Now, I'm also playing on the fact that <clears throat> uh, half of this ship on the side is going to be open. And so I'm doing more of my effect towards the open side of the ship, right? You're not going to see way at the back. I mean, there's going to be so much stuff going on here that you're just not going to see that. So I am playing more on concentrating more on the spot where you're going to see it more, right? Now this one here is almost completely dry. Just some of the heavy spots is still a little wet. But it's not to say that you can't go back. And uh, let's see, this is going to be the front. So that means this side you're going to see more. So you could, you know, not enough right there. Maybe a little more over here, a little bit here and here, and then just let that dry. So you can play with it quite a bit. So it's meant to age, age the wood, and really, it does look pretty darn good. I do say so myself. All right. So. Um, I'm not sure once it's dry, if you wanted to, uh, I'm pretty sure you could probably throw another coat of varnish on this, which is what I might do. Um, but we'll see. I'm going to let this stuff dry up. I'm going to clean up my brush. I'm going to dump this back in the bottle. And then uh, we're going to go from there. So give me a few minutes. I'll let this stuff dry up and I'll be back. And we'll get this stuff into the... Uh, to the rib cage of the ship. See you in a few. Okay, everybody. So that's all I had time to dry. Um, now I guess it's uh, time to put it in there in the rib cage. But I went and did a little bit more. Now, of course, this isn't part of the procedure of the ship. This is me weathering and detailing, like I said, I was going to. And there's going to be a lot more of it. All right, so here is what I went and did. Of course, I'm using things like AK. I'm probably still going to use a little bit of flocking yet. Uh, but that won't be until I start putting some more together. So, now, I don't know if you can see this. I'm going to turn the bright light off. Maybe it'll help. Can you see the green... The brown, the wear marks, where the cannons are supposed to be, where people keep walking, the moss. These are all the same thing. So you can see where people keep walking. Now a lot of this is going to be hidden, so I thought I'd practice on here first. You know, and see what it looks like. You can see where people come up the ladder. <clears throat> you can see where they're standing beside the, the cannons all the time and walking up and down the pathways. So there we go. So I'm going to now start putting this into there. So let's get this one out of the way. And get this one out of the way because we're going to start with the middle one. Even though they tell you to start with the... Uh, the front one, but um, yeah, the way I did it, I just got to figure out where I got to go here. Okay, so the way I did the planking, uh, it's easier for me to do the middle one first. So that's the way it's going to go. So now we need <clears throat> some glue on the ribs, right? So we're going to get out our trusty wood glue here once again I think it's this one right one two three one two three works on the fourth one yeah so now we're going to continue on we're going to do this one do this front one
Okay, so there we go. Uh, put a few elastics on just to uh, add some tension in. All right. And uh, keep things in place. So I'm going to let this sit for a while. And uh, we're going to let that glue dry really good. Everything else is sitting down nice and tight. And uh, we're going to go from there. So I will be back when this glue is dry. And uh, we're going to get a bunch more done. I'll tell you about uh, those mismeasured pieces. So I'll see you in a few. Okay, everybody. So now that we've uh, got that deck glued on and it's all dry, ready to rock and roll, we're going to start moving on to these little uh, hatch openings. You know, uh, there's ladders that go in there, right? Now, um, let's see if you can see that a little better. Uh, where are they? Right there. C1 and C2, okay? Now, they're saying C1. Oh, that's on the other side. Uh, right here, C1, okay? And then there's some C2s. Uh, over here, you can see the C1 and C2, right? Okay? Now, you go to the reference page because that's how you figure out how to cut everything. Um, C1, uh, there's four of them. And they say uh, 2 by 4 by 16 mil African walnut. So we go to get our African walnut, walnut, which is good. But if you measure the hole that it's supposed to go in, right, this square hole right here, Okay, um, they are actually 20 by 20. Okay, so 16, if you were to do it, uh, if you were to measure or cut 16 millimeter, you'd actually have a gap at both ends. And you're not supposed to have a gap or, you know, one end, whatever, but just you would end up with a gap because you got 20 mil hole and they're saying cut a 16 mil board. Well, that leaves you four mil, right? So, um, it's not going to work. Um, so you're gonna need to change that from 16 millimeter to 20 millimeter. This is why you always measure everything on anything that you do, but especially when you're working with, uh, with wood or something, and just to double check because sometimes it's a misprint, right? or mismeasured now of course in between once you got one here and one here you got to put two in between so uh, now that you've changed them to 20 mil these are two mil wide two mil wide now they say you need 12 millimeters in between which does not work it's too small again right so now you take your 20 minus your four mil for your boards you're now left with 16 millimeter. So your longer ones are 20, your shorter ones are 16. Okay. So I've already cut them. I've already glued them, sanded them, got them all flush and level. I think I got to do a little bit of sanding, nothing major. But I did the uh, forward one and I did the aft one. All right. So I got them in. Then on the next step is going to be building the ladders that go in there. Now I've already double checked um, the planks or the pieces that go in between your uh, your rails. They call for 12 millimeter. Okay. Again, uh, 12 millimeter does work. Um, I think what it is is they just uh, screwed up on marking these two measurements. At a tw uh, instead of 16, it's 20. Instead of 12, it's 16. Now, I've already made the ladders, you know, because I wanted to get this all figured out for you guys. All right, so I've made the ladders already. And they just slide right through in there. There's, like, almost no play whatsoever. you got maybe half a millimeter of play. Okay, so those will sit just like that. 
in there. Okay. Now, looking at the instructions, um, the way they took the picture, it's straight on from the rib. Okay. Um, right here. Okay, they took the picture straight on from the rib. Okay, right here. Now, when they show it, um, they show the ladder sticking out to the second rung on the floor. Okay, but you can't see where the base goes, so it almost looks like it's floating. Okay, when you look at it from the side. If you look carefully in there, you see those little center humps, right? Right down, let's see if I can point here. Right down, kind of in here, all right? This little hump right here, okay? Maybe if I turn this light on, you might see a little better. There you go. Hey, you can see now. So, these little center humps in here, all right? I know it's hard to see, but there's one right there, okay? That's what the ladder is actually going to sit on. So you're going to put this in there. Let's see if I can hold this now. Can you see how it's sitting in there? No, you can't. Uh, let's see, get a good angle. Yeah, it's going to sit on those. Both of them will do that. So you've got one ladder here and you've got a ladder here. Okay. And like I said, it's going to stick out with two rungs. The second rung on the floor, or level with the floor. Okay, can you see that? Somehow, there we go. So the second rung is going to be level with the, pretty much level with the floor. Okay, it might stick up a little bit, give or take, but yeah, that's how it's going to be. So we're going to glue those in. And uh, that's the only thing so far that you have to be aware of. C1 and C2, um, change it from 2x4 16 to 2x4 20. And C2, change it from 2x4, 12 to 2x4, 16, okay? So far, everything else works. Now, of course, I've got the ladders built, even though I screwed one up, but that's okay. Actually, maybe I didn't screw one up. I'll put this one here. Yeah, that one looks good. I just put them on the wrong side. That one should be right about there somewhere. Hey! Right on, they work. Now, I'm going to probably stain them up just a little bit so that uh, they're a little darker. Uh, it doesn't say to, but I'm going to. Now, I'll probably use the actual wood stain and uh, stain them up before I glue them in. But for now, we're going to leave them there. Put them up on deck so that we don't lose them. Put this back up here. Now... What we're going to do is move on to the next step, right? Now, the next step, uh, we've got to build this thing. I have no idea what it is. If you know what it is, let me know so I know for next time. But anyway, so we've got to build this. And I wish I could freaking zoom in. Uh, so, as you can see, we've got to build this thing. Now, we've got to cut all the pieces. And then we've got to shape it like this little squiggly line that they show here okay now I, once i cut the pieces be, because i've got the pdf right i'm going to see if i can zoom in or zoom out the pdf so that i can match that little squiggly line shape up to the length of the piece of wood that i've got to cut if i can you do that then I can uh, use it to shape them. Uh, this is where something like this would be nice to have a one-to-one -one picture. Here, this is the shape that you need. Otherwise, you're guessing at that shape. So you're going to try and make it as close as possible. So anyway, so we're going to start out with a... Uh, I have no idea. C5. One, it's a 6 by 28 uh, round dowel, lime wood. Uh, so we need one of those. We need 28 millimeter long, and it's a 6 mil rod. Then we need C6. C6 is pre-cut, so it's over there somewhere. So we'll find that. And then these things are 
C7. We need eight of them. They are two by four, uh, 18 mil African walnuts. So we're going to take our African walnut out again. We're going to need it. All right. And we're going to cut those pieces up. Uh, once I got that, um, your dowel is going to stick through the wood plywood piece by three millimeter. And we're going to start putting them on at 90 degree angles. And uh, we're going to put all eight of them in. And we've got a uh, 1.5 millimeter hole to drill in the center of that dowel. Then we're going to start shaping them. Uh, I may end up shaping them before gluing them on. We'll see how things go. So I'm going to get all that stuff cut and ready to assemble. Figure out if I'm shaping before I glue. Um, and then I'll come back and I'll show you where I'm at. Okay, so um, I've got my dowel cut. And I've got the hole drilled, right? Just used uh, the pin vise and a micro bit. Now uh, it's got to stick through this piece of plank, right? Uh, by three millimeters All right, so I marked that off then I measured the thickness of this and marked that off so that I know that that line is the top of this right because when you put all those uh, African walnut on um, They got to sit flat on that Now I went and traced this it just so happened to be that the line that's there uh, showing in the uh, instructions is the right length and uh, so I just went and made a little template of it, right? Just cut up a little template with that notch and everything. And I made a bunch of them. Okay. So there you go. I kind of pre-cut all of them. And I will do final filing and sanding afterwards because from the looks of it, it kind of has to be a little bit roundish. So I figured I'll put them all on. And then once everything's nice and dry, I can uh, do the final filing on it. And we should be good to go. So, uh, we have to figure out a way to 90 degree these things. And I think, really, I'm just going to eyeball it. So, I'm going to use some of my leftover paper here which is just a sticky pad <clears throat> I am going to grab some wood glue and put it down on the paper and grab a toothpick here and spread it out just a little bit here so that it is roughly the length of the piece I need find my tweezers so the first one we're just going to dip in here <coughs> Like so, use our finger and smooth it out a little bit so we're not overflowing too much. We're just going to put it on, lining up the bottom with that top line, and we're going to make sure that it is running parallel with the spindle or the dowel, whatever you want to call it. And there we go. So that one looks good. I'm going to grab a uh, cotton swab. If I have any out, I do not. I'm going to let that set up just a minute here, and then we're going to try and get, I'm going to loosen this cotton swab off a little bit, and then we're going to shape it more into a point, so that we can get down in there a bit, like so. Make sure it's still straight. So now, I'm going to put one directly across from it. Now you probably can't see this, but as you can see here, I have put them on there, right? And they are parallel to the stick. Now we're going to do a 90 degree on either side, and then we'll go from there.
so got that all done all right looks fairly even everything on the sides is good all right so we're going to let that dry and then we're going to take that and we're going to glue it onto this but i think before i do that i'm going to uh do some more shaping so we're going to let that dry and we're going to move on to the next step the next feasible step anyway so now we've got a, a small ring and we got to glue in the ladders uh, but let's get this ring out first this is c8 <clears throat> c8 is preformed and i do believe it is in one of these um, little kits here there is two of them over here a c8 we got this one we got a smaller hole wider ring i do believe it's the bigger one that we need because it needs to go in the middle so it's got to go here like so okay that that c8 ring is going to go right here so i'm going to clean up my desk here and i'm going to bring down the ship so that we can look at getting that stuff installed now it does state in the instructions that um you can uh stain these ladders and the uh this the ring here and that pedestal thing i think there's it's meant for a chain or a rope or something i don't know yet uh if you can tell me what it's for hey that'd be awesome uh, but anyways it says you can stain that stuff so and i haven't had my mic on the whole time i'm so sorry guys hopefully you still heard everything but anyways, uh, yeah, so I'm going to look at either staining, but I was thinking I might paint that like a chocolate brown or maybe black or something. So I'm going to look into that, and once I get that figured out, by the time I get that figured out, that thing should be dry. Uh, then it's saying we can stain the deck, which I've already done. Then it looks like we're getting on to the upper ribs so that we can do the upper deck. Okay, so I will get to this and figure that out. I'll come back. I'll show you what I've done and we'll get on to the next step. So I'll see you guys in a few. Okay, everybody, I'm back. And uh, yeah, we've got the deck weathered. Um, I built the ladders and I weathered them. And I ended up painting them black. I've got that uh, thing built, whatever it's supposed to be. I fitted the ring on that is glued in I made sure that uh, the dowel fits through and sits in so um, yeah this is what we're looking at now you can see where I've weathered a lot of it and then I've sanded through used a little bit of fine sandpaper and I sanded through where uh, people would walk all the time or in this case you know see creatures um, but before they were sea creatures they were actual men and uh, yeah so I've got that and then you can see where I've scratched in between that uh, where the cannons should be and some wear marks where the cannons roll back and forth all the time um, now I forgot to show you guys the ladders and stuff but you know um, I do have more to make so i can show you that later on okay this is all glued in and uh, it's ready to go now my next dilemma is um in accordance to the instructions right find where i'm supposed to be here in the instructions we are now supposed to uh Put all of these ribs in okay all the way across okay up in here all right we're supposed to put them in so I've got them all sanded I've got them stained and all of them fit no problem but 
after that you get into the main decks all right and i'm starting to think oh it's like well what about the cannons how do we put the cannons in there and uh you know how do we tie them down and everything else and i'm going through and i'm going through you know and we got the grating on now we're starting to get into the side planking but yet still no no cannons or anything yet here we're getting into installing the leds and you got to slide them through all these tiny little holes you know that's fine what about all the storage what about the cannons and we're keep right on going here now we're building them all the medallions are on the side you know then we're getting into well they're showing the cannons in at least the upper deck which is fine the outside of it's painted still no cannons in the lower deck all right still no cannons now we got the little boat that goes on top it's not all the way into way back here that they want you to reach inside through the holes to put cannons on this side of the ship where you're not going to have access i'm not quite sure how you would do all the tie downs way back there when you can't reach them same thing here okay that's fine they you put the cannons in the open area right all through here and there's chains there's a hammock one hammock that you got to make right and that's got to be installed in there well how are you going to do that with all this decking on you know what i mean it's just it's not feasible i mean they say glue it down well that's fine but if you're trying to go a little more realistic right with all the tie downs and rope holds and all that stuff you got to do that before that deck and before all that ribbing goes on so uh in the next video um we're going to be jumping ahead quite a ways to the point where we have to make all the cannons right so that's some of the detail work right here. So we're going to be doing all of this cannon work and detail work. And then there's a few things that I notice here. Like they want you to drill these holes and it's for the pin rails. Um, but they don't tell you how far apart the holes have to be. So that's something we're going to have to figure out as well. Um, but we're going to start doing all these cannons. Get it all done up. And we're going to put them in here so that we can actually tie them down the way they're supposed to be um, and do a bunch of the other detail work we'll get the leds ready to go in so as we put the ribs in we can feed our leds in here lay them in here put the ribs on then we don't have to try and sneak them through a, a hole somewhere up front and try to weave them through uh, that's going to be a pain in the butt right so we'll get the leds laid in ready to glue to the bottom of the ribs because that's where they go is they glue them to the bottom of the ribs and uh, once all of that's done stained painted whatever then we can look at putting the upper decks on all right so that'll be into the next video and um, from there uh, then we'll get back into doing the deck work so we're going to be doing a bunch of detail work, some cannon building and storage building, things like that, that uh, we'll have to do. And uh, so it's just, uh, you know, to let you guys know if you're building this, you might really want to look at doing it in a manner that I'm going to do it. I'm going to jump way ahead, do up a bunch of these cannons, get them all tied in where they're supposed to be. Um, now, the hard part about that, is we'll have to look at where all the gun ports are right on this side it's not bad but on the other side you got all these gun ports so we got to make sure they're centered in there so we're gonna have to figure some of this out um, yeah it's gonna be interesting anyways and uh, but at the same time uh, if we only tie them in and don't glue them down you could move them around if they're not quite centered in your gun port, right? So, uh, yeah, that's what's going to be in the next video. So make sure you stay tuned for that. And the best way to do that is hit that subscribe button. Hit that bell notification. Make sure that all notifications are turned on. Definitely hit the like button if you're liking this, uh, the way the ship's going right now. 
share these videos for me. That's a big, great help of that. And some of the biggest help you can do to any of your favorite YouTubers is to watch the entire video from beginning to end. I know sometimes it's boring, but that's the best way to help your favorite YouTuber. Now, if you really want to follow up some more and keep up on uh, some uh, other progress of other things that I'm working on, make sure you give me a follow on my Instagram and my Facebook group. Links for them are down in the description. And if you want to help out the channel in any way, I do have a PayPal me link and a Teespring store with merch in it. So go check them out if you want. And if you want a shop card or a sticker, if you want to send something, uh, hit me up in my email and uh, we'll get everything figured out for you. We'll get a shop card out to you or we'll get an address for you, you know, so that uh, you can do whatever you want to do. So with all that being said, no matter what you're building, read the instructions all the way through, study them several times. Because no matter what, you're going to figure something new out, maybe an easier way to do stuff. But no matter what you're doing and how you do it, make sure you build it for you. And until next time, later.